Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Connection Wednesdays. Uh, uh, my name is Alexander, and I'm the product engineer at Idea Statica. And together with me is Ralph, who is also a product engineer. And we will have a webinar about member and connections from Idea Statica. For all of you who are new uh, with uh, GoTo webinars, uh, all of you are in listen mode. Uh, if you have some questions, uh, no problem. Just type them in into the panel on the right side into the section questions. Uh, today's agenda, uh, we will show you how to export a uh, member of Berlin uh, plus joints uh, from RFM into our uh, application checkboard. Uh, in the checkboard, uh, we will show you some functionalities, how to make the conversion of the of the uh, of the cross sections, uh, check the internal forces, and so on. And the next step will be a design of the member of the Berlin together with uh, some new feature, uh, lateral restraint. And of course, uh, the joints at the end of the Berlin, um, we will make a check of this of these uh, joints. But uh, at the beginning, uh, we would like to ask you a simple question. Uh, how familiar are you with the checkbook application? You have three possibilities. Please, if possible, answer it that we can check how familiar uh, you are with uh, this application we have in Idea Statica. I will leave some seconds for you. They are still answering some of you. Still voting, still voting. Okay. I will. Wow. Maybe. Yeah, still some of you are trying. Okay. So maybe we can close it. And uh, as you can see, uh, about half of you never heard of it. Some of you have already seen it, but not very familiar with it. And the rest is working with it regularly. So maybe it's, it's good, it's now time to get more info about it. So, uh, let's go to our example. Uh, we will show, uh, we have prepared for you a, a simple structure uh, where we will try to make the, the design of the Berlin at, on the joint. And now it's time for Ralph and he will explain uh, more how to how to make this that this part of the of the structure thanks alex so the idea is um that we are going to take some uh, an element out of an rfm model and we are going to Sorry about that. And we are going to pass that over via chatbot into our member application and connection application. And that's not 
yeah, here we go. It's just catching up. So there is the the the, the C shaped purlin um, in question. Also connected with it are the rafters and several bracing elements. So the idea with Chatbot is that we transfer information from one application, one source application, in this case RFEM, into our um, database that we use for our analysis and design, co-check, et cetera, of uh, connections and members. Because I've already got a member highlighted in RFEM, I can select the member button and that member, along with its associated um, connections and other members that relate to those um, connections or nodes will also be imported. If we do not recognize one of the sections in the RFM model, possibly because it's been named slightly differently or, or it's a custom section, we can map that section to one uh, to another section in one of our extensive uh, section databases. And this will be remembered from now on, so that if we come across that section again in a similar RFM project, it will automatically be imported. So here we see that Perlin along with any associated members. So we've got the Perlin adjacent to it, we've got the, um, the rafters left and right, and we've got the bracing members, the cross bracing members for the roof. However, it's not really set up the way that we want it to um, in Chatbot for our analysis purposes. So the first thing that we want to do is merge our rafters from several discrete um, portions into one continuous portion. So we have essentially been able to merge either side of the node. Currently, uh, for some members, we have to um, reintroduce the eccentricities for the members so that we can offset, it, particularly these um, angle bracing members so that we can offset them um, down and up um, ready for almost like back-to-back um, -back, uh, leg uh, connections uh, so that they each um, transfer over the top or underneath the other one. But we've got control of eccentricities and we're constantly looking at ways that we can improve, improve uh, the functionality here within uh, within chatbot and um, member configurations. Part of the um, transfer is also the loads and we see all of the load cases and we see all of the load case combinations that have been defined in RFEM that have also come through into uh, chatbot. We can change these if we want. We can isolate different ones. We can use them um, slightly differently. We can choose individual load cases. We've got massive control over which load cases you use in your analysis going forward. Also, um, we have the ability to visualize the loads that are um, transferred over. So if we switch to wireframe mode here and draw those loads, we can look at the different um, results classes and then the different types of diagrams for axial, for moment, and for shear, say for instance. If we were to select a connection, then we would see the distribution of forces about that connection. So we would incorporate then the um, adjacent members. And we can see it again, based on this combination, results for moments, axials, and shears. So this is sort of like a, a verification exercise that we can go through just to make certain that we've got um, sense. It's like a sense check that we've got everything that we needed to come through. So this is a very whistle-stop tour approach of how we can 
um, use our member functionality to design and check um, the members in isolation. You'll see that the results classes here are numerous and further on in the presentation, we will actually um, condense those into three suitable ones for time saving purposes. But um, because obviously we've got the power of the computer behind us for this tool, um, we can rattle through all of the, um, the load case combinations for this particular um, envelope if we wanted to. The first thing that we need to do um, is to define the what the connections look like um, either end of the purlin. I'm going to go about this in two ways. The first is a longhand um, method where we essentially break the connection down into um, its component parts and model every single one um, from scratch. So these are called operations, and those of you that are familiar with um, assisted product idea static connection will understand and will will recognise this um, straight away. So we're going to define um, a connection between the two purlins, um, which essentially is a back-to-back -back plate, and join those together with uh, a couple of bolts and also um, weld, weld, welds on the internal surfaces. Very easy to control what happens in the editor. And as you can see, the feedback in the model frame is instant, which means you can see very quickly um, what's going wrong straight away, which is, is great um, when you're a bit like me and sometimes your fingers are ahead of your brain. Um, now in this instance, um, we see that we've got um, what appears to be a double set of bolts. So what we can do is we can edit out uh, two of the bolt holes in the plate so that we've only got one single vertical pair. The next step or operation that we uh, should look at is, um, if I remember correctly, will be the um, the bracing plates. Um, but just to make certain we've got the welds correct on the um, back plate to plate for the purlins. So we're going to use a stiffening plate. And we're going to use some options here to um, change its thickness, keep its shape to rectangular, define the shape which is relative to the um, to the node of the connection. And as you can see here, as I change the dimension, the feedback in the window is telling me what's happening. And again, if I've got something wrong, it, it is immediately apparent. So if I align this to the member, and you can, might have seen that appear right at the top flange, but we want to bring it down and we want to act, make it act as a doubler. And this is where, as I said, my um, fingers aren't in tune with my brain. It's still quite early over here in the UK as well. And eventually, I recognize that it should be a doubler. As you can see, it's automatically welded, but we don't want the weld in this situation, so we can just turn those welds off. So we have our first plate, which is ready to connect to the diagonal brace. So what do we do now? Well, we've got two options. We can either do go through exactly the same again, or we can use another time-saving device, which is called copy. And when we copy a plate, um, the basics, um, the basic dimensions, etc., and options are all um, 
copied along with it. And all we need to do then is just adjust some of the distances possibly to um, make the plate essentially go the other way. So in this instance, um, we'll just change the um, height and also the member that it relates to. And then the rotation as well. And then we've now got two plates, um, which is essentially um, the beginning of our connection for this, uh, for the bracing. Because of the orientation of the bracing, sometimes you'll find that um, one location is the front and one might be the rear. And then also, again, uh, orientations can also affect the way that the, um, the distances are entered. But as soon as you go through and swap out one for the other, you will see where that plate is, is lying. And it's, it's a relatively quick um, exercise to go back and correct that. So we've got two plates. What do we need to do now? We need to bolt the plates or bolt the braces to the plates. Relatively straightforward again. Um, we choose um, what we connect from and what we connect to. And as you can see here, we've got um, stiffening plate one, which is the, the bracing plate. And we can define the um, where the bolts start and the positions along the member. And what we'll see is essentially then two bolts appear partially up the member. And we've essentially now connected the brace to the plate. But the plate is still not connected to the rafter. Using the copy functionality again, we can take those bolts and we can manipulate that connection so that it is, instead of brace, uh, connecting the first bracing member, it's connecting the second bracing member, B2. And you'll see as well from this view that the angles are not cut back yet. So they, they actually project um, into the rafter. You'll also see that the bolt spacing in this instance, because of the orientation of the brace, is away from the end of the member. So we can just change that by introducing um, some negative values, which means that it just basically sends the bolts the other way. So two plates, two sets of bolts, relatively quickly. I think it's worth pointing out as well here that because we're using a uh, an analysis um, link from RFEM uh, to Checkbot into member and connection, um, the onus here on the designer is to create a the graphical um, entities for the connection itself. Um, the basic geometry of the members has all come through, as has all the load cases that are required. So all the designer needs to do is concentrate on the um, the actual geometry, the physical geometry of the connection itself. And to cut back the braces, all we need to do is, is, is introduce a cut. And that cut, uh, again, we can copy from one brace to the other brace. And we have an instant um, almost like a two for one um, exercise. I did mention that we will be doing these connections in two, two ways. Um, the second version is a huge time saving um, addition to our uh, toolbox. And I'll come on to that in a little bit later. So now, just to make certain that the plates are properly connected to the rafter, um, we are cutting those 
to the rafter and we are joining those with a suitable double-sided fillet weld. Um, all this does, all this cut does, is tidy up the ends of the plates to the face of the rafter and creates a uniform mesh for analysis. And the last thing we need to look at is how are we joining those purlins to the top flange of the rafter itself. So we do this with a, we want to use a, an angle in this instance. Um, so that for us is a stiffening member. And again, we have um, dimensions, whether or not it's mirrored in different axes, um, define the offsets, etc., cetera, um, and how or what it relates to. And what um, member or part of member that we are um, aligning it to. So we are aligning it to the top flange of the rafter and we want to rotate that by 90 degrees. And as you can see, I've already got a weld set and we've got a nice little angle that is coming in on top of the, um, the rafter there. Um, just holding back the pearl in at the moment. There's no physical connection currently, uh, and that's the next that's the next stage. So we've got two purlins and one stiffening member. So we can't join um, both purlins at the same time. We have to join one pearl into the stiffening member, and then we have to join the other pearl into the stiffening member. But again, that's a simple bolt operation. And once we go through the various options, um, what we'll end up with is, is one bolt through one purlin. And then we can copy that, excuse me, um, copy that operation um, to create another bolt through the other purlin. So we're only doing, in some respects, we're only doing, we're doing a lot of these operations once and then copying it and then just changing the um, the pointers from um, from which object we want to use and for what purpose. You'll also see that when we involve um, a connection like this, the connected objects are highlighted in this case in in orange, um, so that we can instantly see which ones we are connecting. And then when we do the copy, we can tell it. Um, which um, part of the new pearl and we want to connect to and change the um, change the position accordingly. So if we save that, that took quite a little bit of time. But if I'd have used um, a relatively new tool in our toolkit, um, it could have been done so much faster. And we'll have a look at how that works for the next connection, um, which is at the other end of the purlin. As you can see in chatbot, you do get a little bit of, and, and member, you do get some visual feedback in there to say that a connection has been designed and, and this is what it looks like. So when I go to the other connection and edit it, I'm going to use our connection browser tool. And the connection browser is essentially um, a database for either you or your company, which allows you to store connections and then reuse them by proposing solutions to the current geometry. And this is one obviously that we did earlier and stored away. And very, very quickly, it re-associates the design concept in Connection Browser to the objects in the view. 
and all we need to do is a very quick visual check to make certain that we're happy with the application and in this instance I'm actually not that happy so what I'm going to do is find the cuts for the members and rather than the cut that is currently in place I'm going to reduce that cut to give me a nicer end clearance for the bolts so just because we've got a connection doesn't mean to say we have to use it verbatim out of the database and now in a fraction of the time we've got a connection applied to this uh, part of the structure so when we use connection browser with other things uh, other connections in other projects maybe for instance it becomes an even better time saving so now what we're doing now is we're just getting ready to do some analysis on the Perlin of interest so the adjacent Perlin we're just setting up some design perhaps some analysis parameters um, to restrict its rotation and for this for the Perlin of interest Perlin uh, or member 108 we're going to introduce a lateral um, restraint now currently what I'm going to do here is uh, for this particular option I'm going to have it I'm assuming that it's bonded along the full plate although it could be um, need necessarily be continuous it could be intermittent I'm also going to um, make it rigid torsional although that could be free and partial and I'm also going to fully restrain it laterally as well so this purling essentially cannot go anywhere which is the the ultimate condition um, for um, to compare against so this this could be like the baseline um, option or you could actually just um, do not apply any lateral torsional restraints at all uh, and that could be the other end of the um, and it, we appear to have stalled Alex, could you possibly just give that a nudge? Apologies for this. The reason why we I did a video for this instance is that uh, my connection to our network wasn't that stable. So I, um, discretion being the better part of valor, I decided to record um, the operations that I could um, I could talk over just yeah, yeah, maybe just drag that up a little bit there we go right thank you so here we go we can um, we can define the restraints as free rigid or we can actually introduce a stiffness um, and I'll talk more about those um, after we've um, after we've completed this initial analysis um so the first part then if once we have a um lateral restraint if we do a standard non-linear analysis material non-linear analysis on the um perlin itself just for the three load cases of interest um uh, which you'll, is going to take uh, long enough um within the context of a webinar um this will give us essentially our initial results which we can then um, either uh, look at other areas of interest and look at adapt maybe before we go too far or we can go on and do the um, the full design check the initial results for this um, will look look good we're satisfying our initial stages, which means that we will go on and do 
further checks and those further checks will be um, essentially um, we'll do a buckling analysis and then we'll do um, a geometric material analysis but we can see the results here already just from our simple analysis and if we go on to the buckling next and we calculate the linear buckling analysis now that we see some results there already um, and because I was essentially um, varying figures to try and get the some nice results for you to to see um, these are results of a previous analysis that you see down the the, um, the right hand side uh, and again we're using the same three load cases that we'd identified before uh, and we're using those now in the um, all our aspects of the Perlin check and again there's nothing to stop us doing more um, checks with more load cases uh, and again that would be um, that, that's perfectly acceptable so you'll see that we've done the buckling analysis and the uh, the lowest factor is a 1.88 and then we've got full ranges then for um, different load cases and we've elected only to develop six buckling shapes uh, which gives us the same um, number of uh, factors. Before we go on to the um, the next phase, it's probably worth mentioning that we have an article on our website about how we um, we develop the initial imperfection based on um, uh, some uh, ratios to the length. So we're using uh, an L over 150 um, for the initial imperfection for the next part of the analysis, uh, GM NIA. So we're just entering here 33.3 millimeters for the initial imperfections on these um, shapes. And we only do it on the first shape because if we were to put it onto the additional shapes, so that we'd be treated as an incremental imperfection. So if I was to put 33 on the next five, it would be 33, add 33, add 33, and so on, which is not what we want to achieve. These initial imperfections can be from many different sources, obviously, um, not just. Um, imperfections within the actual section but also manufacturing and also erection and again using the same three load cases that we've done that we used before and remembering that this is the this purling is almost fully restrained. And again, we've got some quite nice strain checks. Check out if we were to have a look at the stresses involved, we can see that we've got, um, again, relatively okay stresses. Um, and then if we were to look at the deformed shapes, might not pick it up so much, but hopefully we can see that we are getting a little bit of twist in that purling. Um, and um, we just need to sort of like look at that maybe in greater detail um, as a possibly as another option. The last two things that we need to do for this particular exercise is to actually do um, do the code check on the actual connections themselves. So through Checkbot, if we open up 
each connection in turn. We can um, essentially calculate it and then we'll see whether or not that connection actually passes or fails. But to essentially make it the same as the member check, what we should really do is add the lateral restraints, uh, the same lateral restraints to the purlin or purlins in this instance. And then if we calculate that, what we'll have then is a connection. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to set the bearing member, which is my bad, uh, but I don't learn. Um, and we'll have a connection that is correct and designed, and we'll have the member that is correct and designed in both using the exactly the same parameters, the same load cases and the same parameters um, that, um, that are in use in both, which is important that we have consistency within the design. And we have a pass and more than happy with the results there. We have a well, um, well done design. So I can congratulate Alex on his choice of sections his choice of stiffening members and um we're looking good to um we're looking good to go so we'll very quickly do the uh, the last connection and again um don't learn i must remember to set the bearing member and we'll also set the um We'll also apply some lateral torsional restraint to the top of the um, purlin. So it's, again, it's the same as the other. And then, yep, uh, bear remember, who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? It should be old tricks for a new dog. So we'll just very quickly run through the analysis and we'll obtain a pass, which means that we now have a complete design. And it's a design that we're more than happy with. Um, so we can save that. We will revert back to Chatbot. And that is us. We have a member, we have connections. That whole system associated with that asymmetric Perlin has been designed. And that first option took about 30 minutes or so to design two connections and to do the check on the Perlin. Now, we can take that and we can look at different options. So just need to advance the slide. There we go. So for a second option, maybe what we could do is look at discrete fixings at say 300 mil centers and we can set the rotational restraint to um, to free we can then look at different fixings say possibly for a different wind case um, and maybe look at um, making a, a partial restraint but once we've got the initial case set up it's very quick and easy to do other options so that we can really start to understand the behavior of these members in different situations. And never a fond, um, never a believer in only doing things once, because that really doesn't give you a fully, you know, a full understanding of what is either happening or could happen. And you know, it's important that as engineers, we understand what could happen as well as what is happening um i also I've, I've also got this thing about um restraints i think we can all appreciate what non and full restraint is um how on earth we get um full restraint though is, is one of those uh one of those questions that is uh, 
I don't know, it, it's, it's still quite hard, but we like to assume that we have full restraint in certain situations. And, and yes, I think in certain materials, certain combinations, we can get full restraint, but how do we define partial restraint? How can we get at that partial restraint? And maybe that's something for another webinar, to be honest, but um, that is something that is, is, as always, sort of like nagged at the back of my um, brain as to how we how we define that partial um, partial restraints. Having fixed things at regular centres is is you know is 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 one thing that, that that's fine uh, because we know um, that we're going to get some fixity at those points, um, and that's that's quite straightforward. Um, but in between. Um, what you know? What do we do? What can we do? So, with that second option, this is what we come up with. And if we just advance that slide, Alex, and mouse click, so we can see that we have um, deflections in the x direction and advance and y and z, and then we've got the um, the normalized deflections. So we can start, start to see some different behavior of the purlin based on those fixings at 300 mil centers. Um, and again, we can understand, and we've got some different stress, uh, excuse me, stress variations. And if we have a look at the second purlin now, we're thinking, oh, right, maybe the angle that we're using um, as the stiffening member to the purlin, maybe that's not quite strong enough. And maybe we should start thinking about increasing its thickness, uh, which I believe was, um, my, I think it was six mil or seven mil. Maybe we should start to increase that thickness to about 10 mil to, um, to reduce that stress in the, um, in the root there. So in summary, what have we done? We've used RFEM for our member analysis and design. We've transferred that geometry and the results to IDEA Checkbot. We've used Checkbot to verify and set the geometry and check the load cases. We have successfully checked the purlin and we've successfully checked the connections from the purlin to the rafters. With no information loss, in a very efficient workflow, which will reduce our design error risk tremendously because we're not retyping in values all the time uh, or from one system to another system and risk and risk um, losing a decimal point or putting values in um, in the wrong place. So it's, checkbot is going to be one of those things that if you are using if you are doing member design and you're doing connection design and you're using analysis applications, Checkbot should be at the top of your list of things to use um, rather than um, just redoing and re-entering the information time and time again. It's a huge time saver and a huge risk reducing um, tool set. And then that should bring us on to. So, thank you, Ralph, for your presentation. It was very interesting. And at the end of our webinar, we would like to ask you again another question. Have you already tried the member application? So, please, if you can. If you are willing, please answer. We would like to know more about it. So, oh, fifty percent. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Uh, 
and 60%. Okay, some more seconds. So, okay, I will close it. And as you can see, about 70% haven't tried it yet. And a quarter of you tried only a bit. So thank you for voting. And before we end, some questions from, from your side. Uh, one of your questions is if the RFM uh, version 6 is already possible to use this, uh, this functionality. Uh, I'm sorry, so uh, it is so that uh, the team in RFM, they are working on the API and they are still struggling with it. So until it is finished, we cannot uh, 100% uh, connect to Idea Statica. Uh, I suppose uh, it, we can expect it within probably within a month or so. So certainly in in some weeks it will be ready, but uh, right now uh, it's not yet. Uh, another question: If it works with uh, with the robot from Autodesk yet? Yes, it. It works uh, also with the robot. Uh, maybe I can show you uh, all the applications uh, we we are connected to. Uh, we are connected with a lot of uh, with a lot of uh, software uh, from Autodesk. It's Revit, Advanced Steel, uh, Robot. Uh, then we have also Tecla structures uh, from SCI, SAP 2000, ETABS, STAP, Pro, RFM, RSTAP, uh, Bentley, and of course, CIA Engineer, Midas, uh, Modest Constell. As you can see, uh, there Access is a lot VM. of. Yeah, Access yeah. VM and so on. So uh, there will be, of course, in the future another. Another third party software we will connect to, but uh, right now you can find it uh, all of them here on our web page. And also, not to forget, it's very important. For example, if I click on, on the class structures, uh, compatible versions. So it means it's also good to know which version is compatible. With with uh, with our latest version of Idea Statica, uh, so please also check this table if you want to connect to Idea Statica. I think it's also worth pointing out, Alex, that um, the functionality that we've shown today with regards to um, geometry and eccentricities it doesn't always follow for every single uh, solution that we connect to. Um, we very much rely on the API of um, the, the, the individual solutions. And if we cannot get at what we want to get at um, with regards to the member definitions or no definitions or eccentricities, um, or if they're not exposed through the, uh, the host API, then that's something that we can't actually um, bring in. That's why we need to be able to still manipulate to a certain degree and that's what we get into grips with with regards to chatbot is to um, how much we we essentially lock out uh, from the user um, the the manipulation of eccentricities or or member rotations or or, or the like um, so not every solution is the same there are some limitations and you know we will we we tend to try and document as many of those limitations as possible so that um, you know what can and can't be done. Yeah, yeah, correct. And this can be found on our web pages. So um, 
this is probably the main info about it. So thank you for the other questions. We will answer them per email then later. Uh, we can uh, skip to uh, next info. Our next webinars will be on September the 21st uh, about fatigue checks for steel connections. And for those who are interested in the concrete section of Idea Statica, October the 1st, we have a, a concrete webinar right now. I'm not sure if we know about the team we have uh, prepared for you. So, and after the webinar, uh, please, uh, if possible, uh, fill in our short survey. Uh, the recording of the webinar will be found in our support center on our YouTube channel, probably tomorrow or uh, day after tomorrow. And if you do not have any version of Idea Statica, please go to our web pages, download, download it, and try it. And if more info is needed, also everything is found, can be found on our support center. So thank you for, for your attentions and well, have a nice day. Thank you. Goodbye.